Alrighty, ladies and gents, welcome to, as you can see, a live show. It's been too long. John Brzezink, how are you, sir? Good, Ryan. How you been? Oh, Just man. I've been good. It has been. It has been a long time since we've done this. <laughs> right. No, you're, you're married now. Any kids? Yeah, well, there's, there's, there's no new kids on the way. Uh, not oh, yet, no. anyway, but you never know what the future holds. But um, yeah, yeah. I, saw, I saw the honeymoon. You broadcasted it. It was looked pretty good. Pretty sweet. I New have Zealand. to say, honestly, New Zealand impressed me. I, I didn't know. I, ne- I can't believe I've never been. I've been living only three hours flight away from New Zealand this whole time, and I've never seen it. So, right. Oh, we got we got a bunch. Of, how was how was Romania? Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, the people were great. The, uh, the landscape is beautiful. It's super green, lots of rolling hills, um, uh, nice trees. Um, weather was perfect. A um, little rain here and there that kind of messed things up. But other than that, I mean, it was a, it was a perfect trip. It was, took forever to get there. It took me four legs to get there, but um, no, it was worth it. It was, it, it was definitely worth it to get out after the, the last year and a half, two years of all this COVID crap. So yeah, I was yeah. glad I went. Yeah, well, it, it, the sport's been very interesting over the last year and a half. Like you said, COVID's killed so much, but but it's seen some interesting evolutions, and in, which we will get to very shortly. All of the the Dubai stuff and and things like that. But the sport's in a pretty interesting place right now, and uh, and uh, and and I'm hearing whispers on the wind that even you're considering dabbling back in it again, <laughs> but <laughs> well, yes and no. I mean, I've always somewhat kind of kept the the thought in the back of my mind that um the top eight would eventually come back around you know and um you know that shoot when that was supposed to be scheduled almost a year ago and um i got a a message from uh uh, igor's group just a week ago uh asking if i could be ready to go to moscow and pull david in uh six weeks i'm like well um (laughs) i guess it depends on what you consider ready (laughs) I haven't done any. I haven't done anything. I, I figured this COVID thing was, um, you know, because it's still really difficult to travel. It was kind of a, a, a bunch of messy uh, hoops to get tested and this and that, and it's it's still kind of a mess. Um, and I know I, you I don't, we don't have any quarantines yet, but you guys still have quarantine. I know a lot of the countries do. So um, I'm surprised that uh, you know it, you can even have an event um, in six weeks in in Russia. Maybe they're not as uh, strict as we are. Yeah, but it, but anyway, to make a long story short, I'm like, well, I mean, I hate to say it, but I'm just, I, you know, I've, I've kind of halfway said that I was never going to arm wrestle again, just thinking that this was to just taking way too long and been, been super lazy and not, <clears throat> not doing anything. But you know, I, I, I would love to have, you know, gotten a little bit more notice and, uh, and maybe because I, hell, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fat out of shape, 230 pounder right now, so it would take. You know, okay. Qu- that was quite an quite an effort to even make two and I, let alone uh, you know, be in any kind of shape for it. I, I'd be drained and out of shape. <laughs> yeah, I was that was the that was the question I was gonna ask you next was what's the what's the weight that you're at? So 230 pounds, but yeah, when I when I left here to go to Romania, I was probably 227, 228, and those guys mm. that'd be like I they treated me like a king. So I mean I just ate their dessert after dessert and just kept eating and eating i think i'm 230 231 when i came back so yeah yeah, i'm uh i'm out of shape so and and this so this this offer from igor um six weeks away uh he wants you to pull david daddy khan but not at 95 kilos at at any weight well i think that's i i think that's probably flexible seeing as that there's probably no chance in hell that i could make uh, 95 and um you know, six weeks. I mean, I'd have to kill myself to make it. Uh, and I think he's kind of heavy. I think he mentioned that David was quite heavy. I haven't really watched too many of the, the videos, but um, I know he's a young kid. And he's been training, you know, probably nonstop since um, I last saw him at Zlati. So I, I don't know what his weight is, but um, I, I'm not sure precisely, but I know that I've seen him. He's been training with Dennis Aplenkov a lot. Right. Um, and he's looking, he's looking big. Like I, I wouldn't, I, I would guess he's around 240 or something with the way. Oh, looking. wow. You know, yeah. So. Well then, okay. Well then I won't, maybe I won't have to lose any weight if, if there's a new weight, but I don't know. It, it seems all kind of strange to me. I mean, I, I, you know, I, 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 I wanted to do the top eight because it seemed like it'd be a fun thing to do if all eight guys are in one place at one time, but he's mm-hmm. kind of going to, you know, scattered around a, to different tournaments. I know things are still big mess with the COVID. So, um, mm-hmm. but I don't know. He's trying his best, I guess, and 
um, you know, maybe I'll, I'll try to accommodate them just to just to yeah. get out of the house and do it. Ladies, that, that, that is exciting news, John. The arm wrestling world is going to go nuts if, if, if you pop up and, and compete in six weeks' time. But that's... I'm, in, I'm in horrible shape. I, I, well, I shouldn't say I'm in horrible shape. I still could somewhat arm wrestle. I, mean, I, it, it, I, I felt actually pretty good against uh, Adrian. Adrian? Adrian? Yeah, I think uh, the uh, Romanian uh, champion for like one match or maybe two matches. And then it was, <laughs> it was downhill bad from there. And then it was just like I felt like a baby. Yeah, so um, I've got a match or two in my in in uh, in the in the books yet, but um, I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could do six. Yeah, no, six six rounds, and David David Dedekind's looking ferociously strong too and hungry. So it'd be it'd be on six weeks notice. That's that's a that's yeah. a, that's a big ask. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's just enough time to make me be sore. You know, it hurt me. Yeah. <laughs> So, well, John, we got um, we got a, a bunch of people on at the moment, but and uh, a couple of super chats coming in. Uh, the first the first super chat is a question from uh, Rando Commando Forty One. He says, "John, who would you like to pull now? If you if you could go back and be in your prime, who would you want to pull?" <laughs> Interesting question. Who would I want to pull now? Well, I mean, the, you know, the, the top of the heap right now is, uh, of course, you know, Devin, Vitali, and. Um, you know, Levon. I mean, um, yeah, I'd be I'd be focused on those three guys right now. You know, there's still you know, there's so many super heavyweights now, but um, yeah, I mean, Levon, I guess would probably be the one that I would most definitely want to, you know, try my luck luck with. I, I would grab him low, like I, I pulled Cleve Dean, and just see if I can negate that you know thick, monstrous size hand that he has, and see if I could you know turn it inside to see where see what kind of strength he had. What did, Cle- Cleve Dean was. He was a big dude. He was bigger than Levon, wasn't he? Oh yeah, no, his frame was his frame was huge. I'm not sure how tall Cleve was, but um, he had like 22, three inch forms. I mean, it, it was massive, massive, massive hand. I mean, Levon's big, but um, yeah, he's not naturally big like Cleve was. You know, Cleve was six seven hundred pounds. Yeah, John, you you you've just brought up the topic of Levon and and Vitali and Devon. The, the big question that everyone wants to know is what was your opinion of that match with Devin and Michael? How did you see that? Well, it surprised me how big Devin came in um, <laughs> and, then watch it, and then watching the match. I mean, he, he did everything right and he trained, you know, obviously perfectly for the match. He knew exactly what he needed to do, which just develop his hand strength to have a good cup to negate Mike's pronation. Um, so he had a lot of little factors going his way. Like, I don't know if it's luck or just skill with Devin. He, he knows which side of the table to be on. He's on the good side of the strap. I mean, he just, it just, he, you know, he figures that stuff out and, um, obviously his hand was strong enough to, uh, you know, control that pronation. And, you know, once he was able to establish that he's, you know, Michael's kind of a normal guy. Yeah. Well, my, Michael looked to me, um, I, I was, I was really surprised to see, Michael's pronation defeated so significantly. Like I don't think I've ever seen anyone pin Michael out of the straps like that. Um, not since he's been at the top level, anyway. So, right. but it, it it kind of uh, begs the question. A lot of people asking, where is Devin now in the world rankings? Like, how do you see a Devin v Levan match going now? Well, you know, Devin's big enough that he certainly can, you know, stand toe to toe with Levan. I mean, Levan's. I mean, surely he's strong, but I think the, the biggest uh, reason Levon is as good as he is, is just because of his sheer size. And, you know, Devin with, you know, at 300 pounds, he's, he's, he's as equal. I mean, he's got plenty of hand size and strength to, to deal with it. Whether or not his cup would be good enough to somewhat be able to control the match without getting out of position, that's the big question. But uh, as we saw against uh, Michael, I mean, uh, he's probably got the best cup in the business right now to be able to control that, you know, yeah. the monster pronation. Yeah, I, I agree that, that the size in which Devin came in, I think it was 290, 295 pounds or something like that. He weighed in at, um, it was, it was different. I know in the lead up to that match, we were seeing him getting his face, getting fatter and fatter and fatter. He was eating a lot. And I, I know when I've competed fat before, I felt good. So it was, to me, it was, I was kind of expecting it. And then it, yeah, when it came out, I was like, Oh my goodness, where is this? It looked like he was in another level of, of strength right. that we've never right. seen. Before, so. Right. 
Well, and like I said before, I mean, he did he did also the, the right things. I mean, he, he stood tall at the table, um, really tried to maintain, maintain his cup and make Michael basically turn into his hand instead of trying to pull and control the wrist outside. Um, so he did all the right things to, you know, mm. and almost, almost kind of like a little bit of a Jerry Cataract press, but with his wrists. I mean, so and yeah. Yeah. That's, that's probably the most effective way to try to shut down that, that hard pronation that Mike has. Now, now, John, I want to kind of step it back and ask another question uh, about Levan and Michael and Devin. Um, prior to this match between Devin and Michael, I know me, myself personally and many people in the world were pushing for a Michael Todd v. Levan match. Didn't come about. Um, but how do, you, do, do you think Michael would, is still a challenge for, or still a threat to Levan? Or like, where does, that, where does that sit with you? Yeah, I mean, I think... I think um... Yeah, his his pronation, and even if he can't pronate through um, Levon's hand, I think he's got that sticking point, which might tax Levon enough. I mean, it, we've seen Levon get rolled before, so I mean, it's not out of the question. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it'll be interesting to see how those two, the Devin and Michael, compare against Levon if they both get a chance to pull him. Yeah, in their yeah. styles. Yeah, and that leads into another one. Uh, we do have another super chat, John, who uh, from SG Records asks, "What's your prediction about Dave Chafee v Levan? Because I think Dave is actually the the next man to actually. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, well, Dave is so strong in the hand. He's got such good control, but he doesn't doesn't cup nearly enough. He 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 looks for the the pin sideways so much that I think he still might be a little bit. Um, you know, lacking the technique and the know-how to really secure uh, a good hold of Levon before he goes for the pin. Mm. Uh, if it if it stops, I'd worry about Dave. But I mean, he's certainly plenty strong enough, and the key is going to be able to main. You know, if he can maintain that hand and wrist as he's hitting to the side, he's kind of like a, you know, a supercharged, super heavyweight uh, Todd Hutchins. I mean, he's just mm. straight to the side. He doesn't uh, he doesn't play that technique game where he could you know. Like he should, like get Levon sucked in and get him in a good, good, you know, cut before he goes, goes for the pin. But um, yeah, I think he's got good chances. I, I, I can see that one going either way for sure. So, so it it sounds like um, uh, a lot, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people debate uh, in recent times about the dominance of Levon and Vitali uh, in re in respect to the North American greats that we've just talked about. Um, uh, Vitali is another 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 question on, on on all of this balance as well. But you've got named people like Jerry Cataret and that as well that could potentially. I know Jerry's asked for matches with Vitali. Um, do you where do you do you see a balance between the North American greats and the Eastern European greats, or do you see one of them slightly ahead? Like it's a, it's a constant debate that hopefully we get answers to soon. But yeah, I mean I, those those guys, I you know when you speak of Jerry Cataret, there's, there's, that's a different, completely different style until you experience that. Um, it, it, you know, you can be super, super strong and, and go away scratching your head going, what the hell just happened? I mean, I just, um, he can put you in a spot where you've just never been and never felt like, you know, you, you feel like you're, you should be able to control the match, but you can't, you can't push through that shoulder once he gets dove in with that broken wrist. So, um, I can also see Jerry being effective against those big guys, those big tall arms. Jerry, Jerry gets tight in there. And if they're not aggressive off the start and get Jerry off center, uh, they're in for, are going to be in for a long day. I mean, yeah. they might not ever pull through that. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully it happens. You've just been, you've just been approached to, for the match with David. Was that, is that going to be technically under the top eight? Is, is Eagle calling that a top eight or is he calling that a vendetta or? I, I don't know. I, I haven't, I haven't yeah. talking, you know, talking all the details on what he's trying to figure out with, with the David match. Um, I just know that he threw a date out there for June um, or not June, July, the 22nd, I think it was. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. So, I, I, you know, it makes sense. I mean, I, well, it'd be a part of the top eight. At least it was part of the top eight. I don't know if, it, if it's, He's going to redo the top eight. I had heard six, eight months ago he was going to redraw and restart and do this top eight from scratch. So um, yep. I think everything's kind of up in the air. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, COVID certainly did that. And and that that is really what brought about that Dubai opportunity and things like that. Um, but it'll be interesting because 
not having to compete at 95 kilos, but having a vendetta, will that, yeah, will they in, tie that to your top eight progression? Who knows what? But um, it's interesting. Igor has, Igor's shown resistance to uh, giving Levan a match with, with Michael. Then he's shown resistance to giving Levan a match with Devin. Um, I'm now hearing that there's, there's an event possibly coming uh, and he does want Levan to pull, to pull Devin. So hopefully that does actually um, come about, but who knows? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't hurt the credibility of either of the pullers. They, they can be different people a, a year from now. So, I mean, to, to, to think that, you know, you're going to ruin your, any future opportunity to have a great super match. And it's, it's just crazy to me. I, I don't, I don't quite understand the thinking. Um, he should be trying to organize every, every match he, you know, he possibly can. Yeah, absolutely. John, we got another super chat in uh, from from Bart Brzezink's forearm. Is it one of the troll yep. armies. <laughs> he says, uh, Mr. Brzezink, what was your personal favorite career match? Oh, <laughs> personal favorite career match. Well, I got very excited to, and I've said this before, when I uh, beat um, Dennis Leplankoff for the first time because I just truly did not expect it. So it was a big rush. To, um, it, and it, it, it had a lot to do with the uh, the audience. The crowd was just super jam-packed in there and super Nimrov? electric. Yeah, it was at Nimrov. Uh, it was just, you'd have, you have to, you'd have to seen it. I've, I've never seen so many people, um, and most of them were supporters of Dennis because they were, they were yelling and screaming. I mean, and it was standing room only. It was just low ceiling, just just jam packed, um, yeah. so that that sticks out as being probably the top top thing. Um, you know, I would mention you know winning over the top back in 1986, but that was such a long, draining event that when I won that, it was almost more of a relief than um, something that was super um, excited, you know, excitable. How, how old were you when you won over the top? You were young when you were. I had just turned twenty two. Okay, we, so we, I think we were. The, we were chatting about this the other day. Um, we're talking about being a, a, a world level athlete, but not being able to beat the guy next who lives next door. We, were you? And I had to ask the question: When you won the world championships for the first time, could your dad or your brother still beat you? My dad, yeah, I, I, I hated to face my dad because I mean he was my training partner. He knew exactly yeah. what kind of endurance and know where to put me. And I mean, I, I would, we would go to tournaments, and I would. I would crush guys that were beating him and then I would match up with him and that would be like a death match. So, so um, I, norm I normally would still win, but it would, I'd always, it would yeah. always worry me. I could, I could just, I could just imagine you winning the world title and coming home and then your dad rubbing it in saying, Oh, you're world champion. How are you still going? Right. right. <laughs> it's funny. That's it's funny how that works. Your training partner knows you better than anybody and, and can pull you yeah. probably better than most. Yeah, I, well, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I agree with that. I struggle with Jordan Davis, and now Lachlan Adair is just toying with me. He's he's his strength level is stupid. And oh um, wow, look yeah. look forward to seeing him pulling him again if he comes out here. Bring yeah, him with you. Yeah. yeah, he will. He will. He hasn't been let out of the cage for two years. Uh, Zloty Two was the last time he competed, um, and so I felt terrible for him. We actually flew to to Western Australia. Lachlan was meant to face the Ryan Scott, who was the number one in Australia. And COVID rules popped up out of nowhere. And he he landed in the state and the premier of that state sent him back to Queensland. And I I, oh, thought, shit. I took the match for him and ended up winning. So I felt like that was terrible. But anyway, yeah. he's he I know, and this is a segue nice into the, the East versus West event, which is happening uh, I think tomorrow lunchtime for you guys over there in the USA. Um, uh, he's Lachlan's always keen. He's chasing Toddzilla. He wants a match mm. with at some point. Mm -hmm. It may just happen that the next Dubai King of the Table event. It may just happen. We'll see. Right. But, um, Good goal. Good goal. <laughs> he's got it. Got to, He's got to pull him smart, which he's he's got a little bit of experience with him, so he knows kind of someone knows how to pull him. Yeah, John, we, we got a bunch of other super uh, chat questions coming in at the moment that I need to catch up on. And then we'll talk about the East versus West. But we've got a question here from Procrastinator says, John, would you ever consider accepting a super match in one of Larry Wheel's King of the Table events in Dubai? Oh, yeah. Why wouldn't I? Yeah. It, yeah. As long as I'm, you know, uh, good enough notice and it's uh, someone that I think I can be competitive 
uh, with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I've, I've always wanted to go to Dubai. Um, in fact, that was kind of the reason I uh, said yes to the top eight. I was thinking Dubai was one of the destinations, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and actually, um, I think uh, Larry asked me to come out there a couple, three months ago and um, it's just, you know, without a mask, just go out there and meet and, and yeah, that, maybe yeah. do a little bit of pulling and you know, of course, I said no. I mean, I'm, I haven't been training. I'm not probably not even a decent workout partner right now. But uh, yeah, no, for sure I would. Well, there you go. I reckon Larry will cotton on this, <clears throat> and you'll be getting an invite for November, and I'll hopefully see you there, John. <laughs> All right. I, I, I um, uh, yeah. The the event, nothing's been. I don't think names have been announced. I think they're looking for about ten super matches, from what I've gathered. Um, I've had chats with Larry and Adam, and and um. I've, I have got myself uh, not confirmed, but a potential opponent in uh, in someone that I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. I've told you already who I, I'm potentially going to be pulling. Anyway, I've already forgot. <laughs> let, me think, <laughs> let me think for a second. Who are you pulling? Uh, give me a little hint. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's just a, a real small hint because I, I completely forgot. I'll just tell you YouTube because it's not confirmed yet. So I'll tell them that it's not confirmed, but. Working towards it anyway, uh, match with Schoolboy on the right. Oh, uh, Schoolboy, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah that's, that's a tall order for you. That, that that he's a big, big, big he's kid. Big dude. He's a big dude. <laughs> six, oh, yeah. foot, six foot six or something like that, and I think he was 200 and, 265 pounds when he pulled Larry or something like that. Yeah. But right. I, I feel like uh, he's the kind of puller from what I've watched. If if I could, if I can just turn that in, just even halfway into a hook. He right. gets he gets pretty uncomfortable. He's one of those. Well, you, you got you got a nasty sticking point in the strap. So I mean, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past you to be able to pull that one off. Yeah, <laughs> <It'd be good laughs> to go anyway. That's for sure. All right, we got a, a couple of more questions here. Uh, one from Alex. Uh, oh, we're gonna attempt to say this surname. Stavrian Stavrianodakis. Oh my goodness. Sorry, Alex, if I got that wrong, but. He says, what's up, Ryan and John? Glad you guys are back. Um, if you guys need physio or rehab advice, let me know. Instagram, Dr. Alex Fitness. Uh, there you go, guys. Check out Dr. Alex Fitness. And how is your shoulder, John, on the topic of rehab and everything? I, um, well, rehab's not doing anything for me. Uh, I, I've, I've realized that just doing nothing is what uh, keeps it from hurting the most so um it, and i basically think i just have old age arthritis when i've gone to shoulder uh doctors they just say you know after the x-ray they go whoop yeah 80 year old shoulders i mean we don't have to go any farther nothing's torn it's um it's just going to be painful and um i've actually started trying uh uh, uh, uh low dose naltrexone um, as a kind of anti-inflammatory to calm things down um and i'm probably taking it now maybe a month month and a half and I've noticed a little bit of improvement, um, not quite as troublesome to sleep. And, um, so it's, it's calming my aches and pains down a little bit, but, um, is it, is it a balance? Not, not as much, not as much as I would like it to. <laughs> is it balanced left and right or is it worse? Than it's, right? it's pretty, it's, it's pretty much in both shoulders. So yeah, I can't really blame the arm wrestling. thing. I, I, you know, if it was just all on the right, I'd say, oh yeah, it's, you know, from overstraining it, overdoing it, uh, mm. you know, from all the years of arm wrestling, but the left one's almost just as, just as grindy and painful now so I, 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 don't, I don't know if you and I have a similar situation but um, you might you'll recall that my right shoulder went bad about eight months ago and I almost had surgery didn't have surgery went through some rehab and it's come mostly good but now interesting and I always blamed arm wrestling but now my left which I barely arm wrestle with is doing the exact same thing and it's worse than my right ever was and I'm like what? <laughs> what's know. going on yeah huh. well, maybe it is an arm wrestling maybe it's just yeah. it's my body i mean I, I i've done the physical therapy um for many many weeks and you know i've had the therapist trying to get some mobility in my right shoulder by you know cranking and doing what they do and um at the at the end of it all i got really no more movement so i don't i think it's kind of a lost cause to be honest yeah. i think there, i don't i really don't think there's any hope for me yeah, well, you, as long as you keep that hand and wrist strong, you're all good. But uh, right. hey, John, we got we got another super chat question from uh, from no one special three two one. He says, "Hey, John and Blue, huge fan. Question for John: What, in your opinion, is the best way to improve at pulling when the only people you can consistently train with are much weaker than you are?" 
which well, for you, John, so, that's been your entire career. Uh, yeah, no, surprisingly enough, um, if you have three or four people that are uh, weaker than you, 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 can, you can get a great workout. I mean, I, I, get, I can get a great workout with you know, uh, uh, a kid uh, that's kind of, a, you know, mm-hmm. a beginner arm wrestler. If I pull in the right position and let them get in their sweet spots and really just work it to the end, then if I grab a fresh arm, if he's another amateur puller, they, they feel like a, you know, mm-hmm. a ton. I'm sure that you experienced that. I mean, it's you know, three or four guys ganging up on a, a, a good arm wrestler as long as he allows them to get in, you know, good positions, we'll, uh, we'll definitely give you a good workout. I agree entirely. I actually design a, uh, I, I try to get three days table time per week and I design one of my sessions around exactly that. I go to one of the clubs that have got 15 or 20 guys in it and I'm, I'm able to defeat all of them if I was to have a match, but I stay on the table and in 15 minutes, I am absolutely cooked. Burn. And it's, yeah. I just will let them work and hold them and hold them and let them work until they're done. And then they, the next guy comes in and yeah, 15 minutes. It's, it's, it's right. Really right. Done. right. Uh, and also takes is even just getting a little bit of a pump, get, you know, do a hand squeeze or do a couple wrist curls to get that, that forearm pump. You become a, you become a mediocre arm wrestler at best. <laughs> as soon as that hand and wrist, pump, it, it, it just goes to show how, how important that, that uh, hand strength and that forearm uh, conditioning is for, for arm wrestling. Once that goes, you know, the rest of the arm goes, it's, it's crazy. It, it, yeah, it, you know, one of the things that um, just in the last 24 hours, 48 hours, I was reflecting on that as well. Um, I had for the first time in a very long time, actually for the first time ever, I had a three week period where I did no arm wrestling. I did no mm-hmm. good training and I was really curious how I was going to feel when I came back and I gripped up with Lachlan Adair and he was still too strong for me, but he said, no, you do feel more dangerous. Than and that, that yeah. But, you know, waking up the next two days, the 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 muscular fatigue in my flexes oh my goodness like uh-huh. nothing in my bicep nothing in my pecs or shoulders my flexes just uh-huh. <laughs> well and that, you know that's i mean really and that's the only logical reason or excuse why arm wrestlers, arm wrestlers can be separated from super strong power lifters i mean it's it's all in that hand and forearm and if you really look closely that's the one thing that most good arm wrestlers have against the, the powerhouses. 100%. John, we got another question this time, Super Chat, from Michael Todd's Calcified Bone. Um, <laughs> what comes up with these? All right. He's John, the greatest of all time, Brzezink. We, the troll army, are here to serve you. What should I do to beat Devin next time? Who was who asking is to beat Devin? Uh, the, Michael the troll on that troll, so, the on troll behalf army. of Michael Todd. On behalf of Michael uh, Todd. <laughs> I mean, Michael Todd's, uh, you know, approach is is probably, you know, the best thing you can do against Devin. I, I don't know. For me, that rolling hand top roll, a little bit more hand control, a little bit more cup, and then try to roll through Devin's hand um, would be what I would suggest instead of, you know, hanging out the way he does and with a straight wrist pronation. Uh, but I don't know. I, I, I think to his straight wrist pronation is probably a little bit tougher to hang on to than w- what I would try to do um, with the, you know, hand control and that rolling. But um, that's, that's, God, that's the only way to beat Devin. I mean, that tall, tall arm. Um, yeah, well, you would think that some, somebody would be, be able to be stronger than Devin because, you know, even if he is really great in a hook, uh, he's got those long limbs. So you would think that you could, you know, you know, you could get a leverage advantage on him, but it's going to yeah. take someone like, you know, like Todd Hutchins or like you know, Dave Chafee. Um, someone who's ready to fight through center with him. Yeah. Yeah. And those, I think those guys are strong enough. And there's, there's probably a, a you know, dozen guys out there that are strong enough side pressure wise. Once it gets established in a hook to, to, to pop them. And another big factor with beating Devin, you got to be explosive. You, you, you can't travel down that road where it lasts anything longer than five, 10 seconds because, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. your chances go away real quick. Yeah. Well, M- Michael, Michael groups, and I think I, I think I, I didn't hear it directly from Devin, but I, I feel like I've seen comments making uh, that alluded to Devin talking to Michael about how he straps, that he, Michael straps really low. Um, <laughs> And he did against Devin as well. And mm. He, mm. I feel like Devin just won the setup and the straps so convincingly. Right. 
he said he gets right. a good touch. Well, he, Devin this time did pull back, didn't try to uh, establish a, a better top role than uh, Michael. He, he stayed tall, uh, floated his hand, let let Michael just just rotate into his palm and, and just, you know, maintain kind of a little bit of a shoulder roll cup. And um, that's what you got to do. I mean, you got to negate that pronation. You can't be hanging on to it. You got to just let it kind of roll into your hand. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where Michael goes with goes with things from here. I think that uh, losing in the fashion that he did has 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 somewhat motivated him. I think he felt like he was. Uh, <laughs> Michael doesn't need any more motivation. That dude is motivated. <laughs> He's been motivated for the last thirty years, and as, <laughs> as high as anybody could possibly be motivated. So I don't yeah, know it, if I buy that, but. Well, honestly, it, it, it's kind of cool for Michael. I take my hat off to to him and Rebecca. They've they're at the point now in their YouTube career where Michael really genuinely is a full time arm wrestler, even more than he ever has been before. Like mm. that's everything he's doing now. So um, I don't know. I don't know whether we'll we'll see a big heavy Michael, whether he'll try to put on weight to to balance that power that was lacking. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No. I'm, well, he, you know, he says that he was the strongest he's ever been, but I mean, you're mm. right that. that this, even if he wasn't stronger in the gym or isn't uh, stronger, just that that girth in the hand and wrist it, it makes it more difficult to arm wrestle against. It it would be more taxing on Devin to, to be gripping on something a little bit thicker than than. Mm. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, it might help. Yo, we got another super chat uh, once again from Bart Brzezinski's forearm. Um, he says, "Thank you, John, for inspiring me to get stronger and smarter at arm wrestling. You made my weekend answering my question a highlight of my life." Thank you, Bob Brzezinski. <laughs> You're welcome. My pleasure. Have you noticed? We're gonna, we're gonna continue to do this week to week. So, huh? yeah. I don't. I have any idea what you're talking about with troll army. What's the troll army? <laughs> so the troll army, John. Um, as you heard that from that guy's username, Bart Brzezinski forum. There's a whole bunch of um, uh, mashed together names like uh, Devin Sangenschlarit, um, Devin Saplenkov. Um, uh, okay. And there's all these there's, there's hundreds of them there's literally hundreds of accounts that have been made on youtube that provide comments on videos and whatnot and uh it's it it's they're actually being incredibly beneficial to the to the youtube side of the sport it's been amazing and very entertaining at the same time so uh, anyway let's have a look what else we got here we got another um super chat from aussie arm wrestler jake ward one of my good friends he says brzenk is back bang can't wait to see you in dubai and over the top absolutely love this great work blue on getting the goat back on our screens there you go over the top two aussie arm wrestler mentions over the top two have you, have, has the australian arm wrestling federation approached you about over the top two? First, i've heard of it first you've heard is, of it. Is, is it is it a real thing is it really it is. A, <laughs> yeah, oh cool they're, uh, what they've done, John, on the, on the Gold Coast in Australia, uh, I think in late November, um, they uh, are putting on a tournament, uh, $10,000 prize money for the overall winner. Um, oh, wow. In the open class. And there's, there's good, decent prize money in all the weight divisions as well. But they're kind of trying to replicate uh, the original tournament to have one overalls class. And um, right. it's they've, they've, they've built replicas of the over-the-top tables. So it's going to be on the exact same tables. And, oh, nice. And it's fully themed. Be fun. Really cool. it's, actually, it's actually looking really cool. And, uh, but so much of it, we're, hope, we're, we're hoping so much that the, um, the damned quarantine, the two-week quarantine. Uh, right. Is, because no one international is going to come unless that's gone. Right. No. Yeah. No, stuck yeah. in a hotel room for two weeks. Yeah, but we've we've got what have we got seven hundred and twenty three people watching right now, and if what, what Aussie Armrest is alluding to with Brzezink being back, not only on your screens here, but if you missed it, one of the first topics we talked about was John has been asked to pull uh, against David Dadakhan in six weeks, and and you think you're going to do it? <laughs> well, I let everybody out there a little insight. I mean. Definitely don't be doing the arm bets thing through Devin's eye. Um, don't be betting on me <laughs> unless, unless you're getting extremely good odds. I mean, it's probably not a smart bet, but um, yeah. yeah, we'll, we'll see. That's, hey, a, that's seriously so awesome, though. Whether, whether you win, lose, or draw, I think everyone will appreciate that, that six weeks' notice when you haven't been pulling for a year is really not a lot of notice. And David Dadakhan, like you said, has not stopped. He's been incredibly motivated, and I think he's about 240 pounds. So, yeah, 
that's a tough one, just to be clear. But you are the goat, but, Joe. You know, <laughs> when, you know when, when Igor asked me, I said, you know, I, I, I probably would rather pull Vitaly or Levon. You know, it, it's going to be the same outcome. <laughs> <laughs> but he, oh, he said, really? is that a joke? I'm like, no, it's not a joke. I mean, I, it's, it's probably be better, but more fun for me to pull Levon. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. John, we do have another another question here from a, a username called Please Enter a Name. It says, John, is Alexi Vervoda the strongest opponent you faced? And if not, who? He is the strongest hand and wrist, the strongest cup um, top roller that I've ever pulled. I wouldn't say he's the strongest arm, uh, side pressure arm. Um, I think he was probably, even at his peak, um, very beatable by a few good arm rushes that would have get him wrist to wrist, but um, yeah, his, uh, his cup and his, his, that's uh, so a similar style that I use um, his, his hand strength, the width of his hand, the size of his hand and that rotation that he possessed was probably the strongest in the business for sure. Yeah. Und- undoubtedly. And he was one of those guys that, uh, that, that I feel like could have been like, I mean, he already is one of the all time greats just for what he did, but he could have really been one of the all time greats if he had a stuck around, didn't he? Couldn't he? Well, I, I, yeah, I don't know his situation, but um, I, I think he ended up actually having some elbow injuries, maybe pushed it a little too hard, a little too fast. Um, I know he complained about that for a year or two uh, while he was still somewhat in it. So um, don't know, don't know his situation. Don't know exactly. John, we've got, his- um, We've got a, another super chat question from Bring It. He asks, John, is the, he says, John is the undisputed goat of arm wrestling. Now, in your opinion, John, where do you rank Fat Devon currently on the, on the world ranks? Well, skinny Devon, fat Devon. Um, yeah, I mean, he's been around. Uh, it's got to be 20 years now, right? 20, 25 years. So, I mean, so he's he's been around in, you know, the – always the top of the game for a very long, long time now. Uh, and I, and I, I saw your post or something that you did on YouTube about um, the best of all time, the strongest of all time. Um, I, I, you know, I don't even know if I could classify fat Devin as that. Devin is probably the next to Ingen, the probably the, I would classify him as the smartest arm muscler ever. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's, he's probably thought about it more than any, well, maybe other than Michael Todd. Well, they're, they're about, both about the same, but um, no, he's, you know, super analytical, uh, thinks about it, obviously thinks about it a, a tremendous amount and, and is uh, super, super knowledgeable and smart and, and effective with that knowledge. Um, yeah. Yeah. It is. But, it is yeah. Interesting. yeah. Cause he, his technical side was always, uh, I felt like it was his ace, but he just was never quite, robust enough to be considered potentially for a match against the Levan. But, but yeah, the, the thing, the thing that I, I see missing with Devin and he, it's no fault of his own. There's nothing he can do about it. He's just, he didn't have um, the lightning speed like an arson or, or some of the, the super greats. I mean, if, if Devin was built with a little bit, a little bit more of a fast twitch side to him. Um, yeah. I mean, he, he'd be the complete package. Yeah. Yeah. John, we're going to get on to the East versus West stuff. That is that is um, coming up literally tomorrow. Um, we've got some big, pretty big matches. Um, have you have you seen that card? Are you are you are you excited about that? And I know of a couple of the matches, um, and the, the others, a couple of the others, I don't know about. I, I didn't. I, I see Herman Stevens is pulling. I have no idea who is he's pulling against. Her, but Herman, um, Herman is pulling F. A. Komek, who is one of the the Turkish guys. I don't know much about, about FA, I, uh, but Herman Stevens, I think uh, I saw a video from Herman Stevens saying that FA won the Polish nationals in 2018. Um, he's 240 pounds. So Herman's like, I think I've been put in a bit of a trap. So that should be, should be an interesting one. <laughs> um, right. But then we've got, um, we've got Tony Gatowski pulling uh, Bohidir Simeonov. Once again, I, I don't know much about Bohidir. <laughs> So, I know nothing about him. I know in uh, very, well, not very much about Tony either, except for just what I've seen, you know, him pulling in the WAL. So, yep. Um, yep. We then have Sarah Backman and Arena Drieva. Um, I think that's, I think Sarah's giving away a little bit of weight in that one. That, I know, I know, I know Sarah, but um, I don't know the girl that she's pulling. 
you would, you would are in the same boat so far. Um, <laughs> yeah, then we get to the people. The, we get to the people that we know. Then or um, Engen Terzi against Artem Makarov. Um, that I, is that's a rematch. Yeah. I've, I've never. Uh, well, I shouldn't say I've never pulled Engen. I pulled Engen once a long, long time ago. But yeah, Engen is a different different animal now. He's big and heavy and middle well, classified as a, at least a middleweight. Um, and I've seen his match with this. Artem or Artu, uh, almost built like Virgil Arcier, a really big, thick upper arm, um, big hand, strong, controlling hand. Uh, and I think Ian kind of ran out of room when he tried to top roll him. Is that, is that the right guy? Am I thinking the right guy? I think, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Adam Makarov really just clamped and held him center. And, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. He almost went, almost yeah. went into a things move. Yeah. <laughs> and that guy looks like he's, to me, he looks like he's got you know, probably really good endurance and just constant hydraulic type press power. Um, if I was Ingen, I would definitely be trying to, you know, do some trickery to be hitting in a, in a you know, in different directions if it doesn't go, go his yeah. way right from the first hit. Yeah, I agree. It did look like last time Makarov was just simply too strong in the hand and it was just, just a matter yeah. of time. As you said, engen has got a bag of tricks. He's very technical, very versatile and he's explosive too. So anything's yeah. possible, but... Um, yeah. Can't be afraid to move, Megan. The two big matches that everyone's, I think, most looking forward to. Um, the, I think they both could equally be the, considered the main event, but uh, Hadzimur Zaloyev against Todd Hutchins, six rounds. Last time Todd got him. Uh, uh, was it the last? I think the last time those two pulled was at Zlati, and I think uh, Haji yeah. beat him. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, Todd's, I mean, Todd has his weaknesses. Todd's beatable when you pull correctly, like uh, on his bicep. Like, Rustin has no trouble with Todd. Um, mm. Todd is super, super strong if you're trying to beat him with side pressure. And Zolov has, you know, the, he, that's the way he pulls. He, he likes to drag and use that form strength to pull to the side. So it'll be a little bit more difficult for uh, Haji to beat Todd versus, you know, like Rustin is beating Todd. Um, so if Haji pulls, you know, smart and pulls a little bit more on Todd's bicep instead of going across the table, I think he'll have better success. But um, I haven't I haven't seen her talked or pulled with Todd for over two years now. But mm. um, it's seem, seemingly he keeps getting better and better and better. Yeah. Uh, but like if I had to bet, I. I think I would go with hot. I'm going to go with Haji. Just, you know, it's such a big difference too on, on, um, you know, and I noticed it going to Romania just last week, uh, traveling on the other side of the world like that, <laughs> unless you're going like a week or a month in advance, it really messes you up. I mean, I, I got about two hours sleep, you know, no matter what I did, I just could not sleep through the night and, um, could sleep maybe a couple hours in the morning and then I'm, you know, sunlight's up. And so you're, you're, um, I think that's a, it's a big factor that, a lot of people don't think about, you know, last time they pulled in that and vendetta match, I think it was in Las Vegas. So, you know, Todd had the advantage at that point. And also I think Todd had about 10 kilos on Zolo that day. Um, yeah. 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 That was, I, I think that was 97 kilos. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen Todd blown up as big as he was when he pulled Haji that day. I mean, maybe, maybe when he pulled Devin and, and WIL or, uh, yeah. but yeah, no, uh, <laughs> if Haji's coming in heavier than Todd, it's, It'll be it'll be interesting. It'll be you know it's gonna you know it's gonna last a long time. You know, I well, don't think it, I don't think either one. For me, if it goes to a strap and they dig down, I got Todd. But I think out of strap, Zolo has got to be the got to be got to be looking dangerous. Yeah, I, I don't. I think Haji is going to end up having to beat Todd in a hook. I don't think he's capable of or has a good enough top roll to to really you know flatten Todd's hand wide open. Todd doesn't flatten open very easily and even if he gets a little bit of a top roll advantage it is it isn't going to matter he's going to quickly probably try to decide to defend with going into a back into a hook so John, are you going to be watching all these matches they're all live on youtube tomorrow i'm going to try it's tomorrow right what yeah, time I think, for us I think it's gonna, uh, um, well considering i got the time zone wrong for this <laughs> i'm probably not the best man to ask but i think it's going to be around 11 a.m for you tomorrow that this will be okay on. And so I just log into YouTube and just yeah, it's going to be some... um, In fact, John, if you if if you're welcome, if you're wanting to or you can, um, we, and this relates to a super chat from Zach Shaw, sure, another surname I can't pronounce. Shroff Shroff Nagel Shroff Nagel. He says, 
John, uh, can you give us predictions on the matches which we're doing? Um, and he says, John, can we see if you will be part of the live commentary with Ryan tomorrow on the matches? So tomorrow I'm going to be literally doing this. I'm going to be watching on Zoom and and commentating the matches. So if you are watching, John, and you're like, you see something that you want to tell me about, jump on and we can go again. So. All right. So that, that would probably require two phones, which I'm not in possession of. So I'd have to have one phone running Zoom and then another one speaking to you. I'm not sure how this technology stuff. I'm not really. Yeah. All right. We got a, a super chat from Ermi's gag on a weenie. Uh, Ermies, uh, <laughs> I you know we haven't talked about Ermies and uh, Matt Mask yet. Or Ermies, um, Matt Mask. Um, there there are ways to beat Matt Mask that are a little easier, and I don't think Ermies is going to try any of them. <laughs> he's going to do what he's best at, and will it be enough? Um, I, I, I think it will be but um, he's probably going to travel the toughest road he possibly can travel because mm. he doesn't know any better. He's going to try to um, be higher than Matt, which you cannot get higher than Matt. I mean, he's, you know, unless you're Vitale, uh, he's got just, he's going to, no matter how much uh, weaker Matt is, he's going to have that huge ass hand and that height to really just manipulate and put your hand in a bad position. I mean, I know Hermes has got, incredible cupping power i mean we saw it against michael todd when he in their super match um and recently pulling vitale but um i also saw that he pulled with his hand high and he's trying to match that height and then that that um i just think there's probably going to be easier way so because of that i think matt has definitely has chances still to win um it's mm -hmm. going to be a lot tougher because he's now traveling 12 hours you know on the other side of the world to do it uh, so he's going to feel feel that fatigue a little bit more than Hermes will or like their last match. But um, yeah. yeah, I it think is, if I had a, it is an interesting. If I had, you go, you, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say I was just going to leave at the, at the end of it all. If I had to bet, I think I would bet on. I'm going to bet on Hermes on that one. I'm going to call oh, that one Hermes. Yeah, I, I, oh, it's, it's a tough one, and I, I just need to address one little quick thing. Daniel Urich said, "I missed like five super chats, guys. I'm terribly sorry if I did. If they've timed out and they've disappeared, I'm trying to find them. I do sincerely apologize." I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, the, a super chat is when someone actually pays to ask a question. They send, send oh. me through and ask a question, and and I've missed them. But back to I don't, so I apologize, guys. Sincerely, I'll send me an email with your question. I'll make sure it gets asked um uh Hermes and Matt are a fascinating one for me like you said Hermes is going to take the hardest possible route he's shorter but he's going to try to top roll him um and Matt Mask as you said he's a giant when I stood next to the Matt Mask and the first time I met him I was it was in a narrow corridor and we had to kind of sh shuffle past each other and I'm looking at this dude <laughs> So I shuffle right. on the chin I'm like oh my goodness this guy's a giant so right. It, right. I feel like it's just, it's it's going to be one. It's it's all going to be one in the setup. Whoever whoever gets the superior setup is going to win, aren't they? So right. I don't right. think Matt's out of it. I don't. I, I think Matt. I, I have Matt. I have Matt winning four two. Yeah. If if Matt if Matt can be on the right side of the straps and all the conditions are right and he can get the pop on the go and get that hand to go, I, you know Matt's definitely strong enough to probably pin Hermes mm. um, side pressure wise once he gets that big of an advantage. Um, so that'll be that'll the you know obviously well it's the way it is on most arm wrestling matches the start's going to be key and if uh, the referees will set it up or Matt can just get that little little bit of height a little bit of a pop like he did at the WAL then then it's his to win it's and then it, I guess the question will be whether he's smart enough to just hold it and you know out of position let Hermes you know burn a little bit um, <laughs> or if he'll just finish hard and fast and yeah. give him a well, the, the the um the thing about one thing about Hermes is he's a lot bigger than he's ever been before. Hermes, I don't know if you've seen photos of him, but he's 120 kilos is what's being reported. So wow, you know, yeah. That's Some of the photos Hermes. I've seen is big ass forearms. That's for sure. Mm. John, we got a super chat in. That's a juicy question here uh, from Please Enter a Name. He says, John, we need a definitive answer as to at once and for all as to what happened in 2008 versus seven. Were you injured? Not training? Or both? Um, I was asked to arm wrestle that match uh, a couple months before the match happened. 
and then the match somewhat got canceled. And then within the last couple, three weeks, it was on again. And I had promised Neil Pickup that I would do the match. Um, so the situation was kind of weird leading up to the match. It was on, it was off. And then it was back on again at the last minute. Um, you know, during that time uh, training, I was dealing with all kinds of little crazy, just overtraining issues. Um, and at that particular time, uh, you know, the hand and wrist was, weren't completely 100%. Um, but that, you know, that wasn't looking back really at the match. I mean, I, I, I won't even use, I, you know, I shouldn't, I can't use that as the excuse. It was a, a bunch of different factors. Um, the, the situation, the, the setup, uh, I, 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 you know, being on the wrong side of the strap and not really understanding the strap that was back when there wasn't really a fair strap mm -hmm. where they were doing it unfairly and um and then really basically just fighting and fighting and fighting with that on that first match um on that on that wrong side and just basically burn myself out and then trying to switch when i got on the good side of the strap trying to trying to force a hook i mean it was just the, the whole series there was looking back i just shake my head and go boy I just i was just <laughs> made a fool i mean he just he just uh toy you know yeah. used me as a tool you did. You did get your revenge in 2015. Yeah. No. I. I. I yeah. I definitely. You know. As many people do. I. I uh, walked away uh, from that, and um, I learned quite a bit from it. Mm. Yeah. Nice. We got another super chat question from Ermi's Desperini. It says John, other than yourself, if you had to pick one person to beat an unknown opponent in a super match, who would it be? Um, would it be Devin or some other? So, if you had to pick someone to be on your team, basically, who's for an unknown opponent yeah i mean i i i i'm almost thinking that devin or levon are the best in the world right now i mean yeah it's so hard it's so hard i mean it just depends on the unknown opponent yeah i mean it just depends if i knew the opponent then i would i would i would pick someone against him that because i would know his weakness but if it's an unknown opponent yeah, if it's the unknown opponent, Levon, <laughs> and yeah, might be Devin, might be the you know the the, uh, the one. Yeah, for for me, I always when I've asked that random question, I've always thought, well, if there was big money on the line, Travis is someone that I would love. Yeah, yeah, because he, he when when big money's on the line, he's someone like Devin who can win and control the center and the the conditions yeah. of the start incredibly well. I feel yeah. like he's, but... No, he's 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 proven time and time again. If there's enough motivation, and enough on the line, that he can get ready and be as tough as anybody on the planet. Mm. John, we got another super chat from and a good suggestion from Daniel Urich. He says one of the coolest things Monster Michael Todd did in a live when he missed super chats was made and his own post on YouTube after just an idea. Daniel Urich, I like that. I'll do that to all the people that I miss the super chats. I will uh, do a a release afterwards to answer answer your questions. So I agree with that. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so there's Ermi's and Matt, Zolev and Toddzilla. That's all happening tomorrow. I I, I think that um, Ermi's and Matt is probably my most exciting thing. I think that if if Ermi's loses that match, I I think it's going to really shake up. I think I think he's going to struggle to to take it after all of the right. crack table shenanigans and that. Did, did you see that? Um, I didn't. Uh, what are you talking about? He, he's so practicing in w, with in, in the WAL uh, match with Ermis and Matt. Oh, and, afterwards? No, I didn't. I didn't watch too much of that because I know how that sometimes that goes. I mean, all little tarnishes off, and if someone's pulled, you pulled, and then somebody else steps up, and so, I mean, you can't really go by that. But you know, if they were both fresh, then maybe, maybe. But um, yeah, no, that it'll shock me if if uh, Matt is victorious <laughs> against Ermis because I'm 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 putting Ermis like top six in the world even super heavyweights um, yeah at 120 but, kilos, it's very it's very realistic isn't it mm -hmm. but even matt mask is one of those guys i feel like even though matt's not top six in the world he's one of those guys that is dangerous to the top six in the world right yeah he, he, matt's matt's missing the the side pressure the strength i mean he's got the size he's got the height he's got the hand um he just doesn't quite have that you know that Todd Hutchins side pressure so he's he's got a hole in that game and um once there's uh, there's a few people out there that will figure that out and 
in the attempt to grab low and, and are able to force that inside. And, you know, he's, he becomes kind of a normal guy. <laughs> yeah, no a normal, way. a normal, great arm wrestler, <laughs> but at least somewhat normal. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I've had, we had the, <laughs> I've had the pleasure of training with Matt Mars. He came to Australia a, a quite, a, quite some time ago. Um, and that, that was a lot, a lot of fun. And it, once, once the collective weight of our club wore him down, um, yeah, it was, it was uh, essentially one of the great things. I, I love when someone who's above you gets worn down and you can actually experience how they move when it's a balanced match. And like kind of what we talked about right at the beginning with arm wrestling with weaker people, you can still find the balance and, and right. whatnot. Guys, um, we've been on for almost just about an hour. If you have any last questions, now is the, the, the time to do it. Um, uh, then we'll get this one wrapped up. But um, so, John, back to the, the, the coolest subject of everything today, being you pulling a super match in six weeks. What's it going to look like from here through your super match with David? Um, how are we going to... Well, in, we- a prob- in probably the next five, ten minutes, I, I can call my buddy Dustin Allen over. And he's coming over. And um, I, a, a guy that I haven't seen for probably over a year, Brandon Hall, is also coming over. So we're going to do a little practice. And um, yep. I'll let you know next week or tomorrow yeah. <laughs> if, it's re- if it's a really a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Or, okay. or if it's like riding a bike, that I can still somewhat ride a bike and um, it's p- possibly doable. I just I just don't want to get, you know it's tough getting beat. I mean, it's, it's one thing to get beat once, twice, you know, double elimination tournament, but six times it just, gets, it just wears on you. <laughs> I mean, you just, I don't know. Um, it, it'll, it'll be uh, tough for me to say yes, but um, I can be bought. Yep. There we go. That's good stuff. <laughs> good stuff. All right, we do have, we do have one more super chat and then we'll wrap it up uh, from please that her name says, John, your thoughts on Eric Spotto. Uh, as an arm wrestler, and could he could he match it with someone like Dennis or Levan? Um, Dennis, maybe. Um, Levan would be tougher. I mean, uh, Spotto is obviously super super strong, super thick, uh, great in a hook, but his his arm height is his downfall, and and a lot of great top rollers would uh, be able to to really get kind of crazy positions on him, and it would be tough for him to. To, to deal with that even if you're twice as strong if you're hanging out on your fingertips and in and, and bad positions it's tough but Eric, Eric does appear to be one of those guys that just is abnormally strong like super whatever. strong but just doesn't have the right set of mechanics tools. physical you know attributes in the right areas to to uh, you know deal with some of the bigger opponents that he would come across very good. And Burgoyne, uh, sorry, Daniel Urich, one more super chat says Burgoyne's beer belly slash Dev LaRapper asked about stem cells. Ah, stem cells. Have you, your shoulders and stem cells, have you? I've been, pro, I've been asked to, to do it. I've been suggested by many to do it. And um, two factors it's like a 50% that it works. So it's not 100%. Some, I, so there's a, probably the good. 50, part of the 50 percent that's the placebo effect um and then just the cost and i just uh, you know i normally am first in line to be the guinea pig on something like that but um yeah i, I decided to to not really buy into it no that's fair enough now daniel thank you for asking that question on behalf of uh burgoyne's be a billion dev la rapper um, John, thank you so much for, for joining us on the show. Uh, I, yeah, really appreciate it. It's been too long. We need to catch up and have another beer. Did I tell you yeah. that when I was in New Zealand? I saw yeah, you, I saw that. I saw the picture with the yeah, Lagunitas. Literally a pub. Oh, cool. Like there was no more than 300 people in this town and they had Lagunitas IPA. I couldn't believe it. That's it. Nice. <laughs> it felt like being in Arizona again, but it was snowing. So it was a little different to Arizona. <laughs> But anyway, John, I really do appreciate you being on the show. Uh, thank you to everyone um, who's tuned in. And ladies and gents, just so you know, uh, for the next hour on pound for pound armwrestling.com, there's 10% off. Uh, so go grab your handles and all that sort of stuff. But John, all the best. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll right. chat, tomorrow, chat tomorrow after all these matches go down. All right. Sounds good. Take care. Good luck with the training. Appreciate it. All right. Talk, talk to you later.